So I often need to transfer a reference mark from one face to an adjacent face uh, on a piece of stock. And in concept, that sounds like a pretty simple thing to do. And, and it is. But if we look at kind of the tools in the tool bag that we have close at hand, maybe the first choice you might reach for would be a speed square. And you can do it with the speed square, but it's got a couple of issues. You see the little pivot notch that they seem to always put in that corner? Right at the face, it makes this little divot. And so that's the most critical part of the reference mark. And by design, it seems to, to not want to do that well. Now a machinist square, you know, that works perfectly but it's a kind of a multi-step operation. You have to do the one face, then you kind of have to reorient, and you have to do the next face. So it's a lot of kind of little fiddling around bits. So if you're doing one, uh, not that big a deal, but if you're doing a whole series, it gets to kind of be a little cumbersome. So there is this notion of what's called a saddle square, and it's designed for this task. And they are commercially available. And there's some beautiful ones made by woodpeckers and ferritas. But I put one together uh, made from some outside hardwood trim. And for me, it works pretty well. So this is a piece of the outside hardwood trim. In this case, it's oak. I'm just going to measure a length here and cut it off about the size of my hand. So now we have two square ends. And so then this is basically the idea. If we nestle it up in that corner, we'd like to be able to transfer the line from one face to the other. Now we've got one little issue here. This piece of trim is just a little bit proud of the material itself. What I'd like to be able to do is just have it be exactly the same height as the material. And that way, for a three-quarter inch piece of stock, even if it's laying flat on a surface, you can easily transfer from one face to the other. So to make that happen, we're going to clamp this blank up between a couple of calls. And the one towards the front is the thickness of the material that we want to end up with. We we'll use a flush trim router bit to make those exactly the same dimension. So now that face is exactly the height of the stock. I'm going to break over the edge just a little bit so it's a little easier on the hand. Good hand feel. That's, that's basically what it looks like. It's almost like a little piece of angle. And the way we're going to use it, we'll put a mark on the material where we need the reference line. And then we can transfer it, we can make a, a reference line on that face and also transfer it around to the front face at the same time. And because we did it all basically in one step, they are perfectly aligned each and every time. And here's kind of the, the, the notion of why you'd want to do this. This machine is set up to be able to align stock to an engraved line at the center line of the machine. So you can very easily align a piece of stock to that line. You can also do two-sided machining by flipping it over.